we every after dinner we would nick the Nutella jar and go up to our room and eat Nutella while we watched the uh... secrets out. The girls are gonna watch this and be like, oh, I knew it. That's where the Nutella went. Uh, I think the first time I met Ivy, it was both of our very first camps, like at the Matildas, and neither of us realised that until we'd spoken. But you know those people that you meet where you speak to them and it feels like you've known them your whole life? It was like instant like that. I, it was so weird. And we just yeah. kind of like, we just, yeah, we just clicked right away. And then um, I think you turned up at a QAS training session once. And I was like, what are you doing here? I hadn't seen you for ages because you went back to college or something. You were back in America and you were like, I'm from Queensland. I'm like, what? This just makes so much more sense. She's a surfer yeah. and from like right near where I grew up. But we just kind of, yeah, we just clicked. And it was, it was probably the, probably the surfing that really tipped us over the edge. We just kind of get into this surf talk and then no one understands what's going on except for the two of us. <laughs> and it's... Yeah, that's exactly like that how I day one. Yeah. I remember rocking up to the AIS, getting dropped off the bus, and then um, I can't remember, I must have known like one or two people, but I remember seeing you and you looked really surfy, like you were wearing this like ripped denim shorts and stuff. And then I remember chatting to you and straight off the bat, yep, we both love surfing. And like you said, it just felt like I'd known you for ages, like you were a friend from my childhood. Um, yeah, we just clicked. And yeah, you get those people every once in a while, I think, in life. And Loz was definitely that. I was going to say, there's not too many people that I've heard of or know of that would literally fly from Europe to Australia <laughs> for like two days not sleep and fly all the way back to Europe just to go to a mate's wedding. Like that's, uh, that Wait, to me is really like, that oh, Ivy in a nutshell. She's like crazy. She's up for adventure and she will literally like travel the world for her friends. You know what? When I read that, I didn't even know that was the first major tournament that we'd played in together because obviously there was the World Cup, but then you got injured right before it. And so we never really got that one together. I can't believe it's taken our whole careers, literally the last one to have it together. The last one for both of us. <laughs> I know. Yeah, oh, especially with the World Cup being robbed of us. Um, mm. We were like, even still like at the World Cup, like we wanted to be roommates. Um, if weirdly over this whole period, we kind of had different roommates. We were sort of, um, I feel like Ivy, you were the one that, went with the person who was feeling left out or like, you know, like didn't really have a connection yeah. or a new person. And so like Ivy was the friendly face that welcomed people into a team. And, you know, I was with like Colette and Larissa and like Minnie. We kind of had these like roommates over the years, but it's funny. People are usually like besties with their roommates and they are, but like we'd never, that never stopped us. We were kind of like never roommates consistently and for the, our final it was supposed, world cup was meant to be my last hurrah and i was going to retire after that and i was like i need to do this with ivy like i need to we need to be selfish for a second mm -hmm. and ask that we get roommates and we almost didn't get to be roommates and then we finally got approval and then i got injured <laughs> <laughs> and so then we didn't get to be roommates after all. Yeah. My little baby. Uh, Hi, Ella. It wouldn't be an interview without Ella. <gasps> Ella. Ella. Oh, oh, thank you. Good morning. Yes. Oh, I love Ella. <laughs> Um, that's a funny story, actually, because obviously I had made it very clear, abundantly clear, that I was retiring after the World Cup in 2019. And then with the injury and everything, I was like, I'll just push on for one more year and try to make the Olympics and finish on that. And then the Olympics got cancelled. And I was like, sweet, Cam, do you mind if we do one more year? I'm like, I have to finish on a high, like this 10 year career, like I wanted to finish it on a positive note. Um, and we were talking about it. Ivy knew that I was retiring because I'd made it very, like, I was very open about it. That's because that's just me as well. Like, I can't keep any secrets about myself. Or like, I'll just <laughs> tell you off tell you off the bat exactly what's going people probably don't tell the world that they're trying to have a baby like they keep that really under wraps whereas I'm like I'm gonna try and have a baby <laughs> <laughs> probably some 
something that's not normally discussed, but I like it. Yeah, I just. That's why we love you, Loz. You do <laughs> in the best of ways. <laughs> so I definitely knew that was happening, but when she's kind of very, not the opposite, but not as open about like telling the world about everything. And so it came as a surprise to me when I, she was like, Loz, you know this, I'm, I'm also retiring. And I was like, what? So then yeah. when she said it to me in the, in the village, I was like, what? And she was like, you know this. I'm like, I don't think I do. And then <laughs> he kind of said to me, yeah, I'm then And I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And so we were kind of excited and celebrating and being silly as we always are. But yeah. It was very funny. Yeah. <laughs> and then Sweet. I called Cam and I'm like, Cam, I was retiring too. <laughs> oh, it was so fun. I was emotional in the camp before, probably more so because I didn't know if I'd make it. You know, I'd put my life on hold and Cam's life on hold for two years. And I really, yeah, was very unsure of if I would even be there with the team. Um, and so little things were upsetting me. So Kyra Cooney Cross was like very close to me. Obviously we were like living together and like we carpooled for ages and to kind of watch her, I knew her from when she was like 11. Um, and I, her dad had asked me to be her like mentor. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like he just sort of said, I had, I had known him from the Sunshine Coast and um, he'd asked me if, yeah, if I minded her messaging me asking questions and stuff because she just loves soccer I was like yeah that's fine so we've got this really weird text thread from when she was like a kid and then um we were sort of in the uh, Melbourne City together and then Melbourne Victory together and so to kind of watch that full circle of her going from like this 11 year old kid who just loves soccer and me being her mentor to then like watching her start that first game that threw me I was like on the sidelines crying and the people were like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm just so proud of it. <laughs> like, I was so, it was so ridiculous. So that was also a really special for me to finish my career when hers was just starting. Obviously the, the last training session was an emotional one for both of us and everyone making it worse by hugging us. But yeah, mm -hmm. that, that one was kind of, but yeah, I tried to, I sort of switched it off. Did you switch it off? Yeah. Um, well, because I didn't, I was never really going to announce it, you know, um, but once, right. <laughs> funny story, actually, it was the day before our last game at the Olympics and we we're coming off the bus and lots of chatting to, who are you chatting to? I was chatting to KK about it being my last session or. Yeah. I had met, again, I'm the open telling everyone I'm in the physio room with Dave saying, this is the last time I'm strapping my own ankle, like <laughs> all this silly stuff. And like, yeah, anyway. And then Tony overheard his ride. And then yeah. so he just made a little announcement before we got on the pitch to say that, you know, this was going to be Loz's last session. So, you know, we want to make it special for that reason, as well as, you know, it being the last session before our last Olympic game. And then I happened to be standing next to Loz and we just both kind of looked at each other and were smiling for like probably an awkwardly prolonged time I to everyone. And <laughs> then I was like, oh, I guess, yeah, me too. <laughs> and Tony was like, what? And, and was he like, starts what? crying. <laughs> yeah, like people got a bit emotional. Everyone was hugging each other, taking photos. And yeah, after that, I, I didn't want to tell anyone at least then um, because it was the day before our last game, an important game, you know, we wanted to get that bronze medal. Um, but once it was out in the open, looking back now, I'm really glad that I did because um, it People just got to say goodbye a bit too. Was special, yeah. And then I did make a bit of an announcement, which is not normally my style, but I really did love it because I heard from all sorts of people that I haven't heard from in years um, that you don't think follow your career or that your career has impacted them in some way. And yeah, I got so many amazing messages and stuff. So it was, it was really cool to feel that um, love, I guess. But yeah, it was, it was unexpected. <laughs> Didn't plan it, that's for sure. If you're not in the team, it's hard to see from the outside, um, but ask any player on the team and they'll tell you straight away that um, she's, she's the one that I think keeps that positive vibe on the field and off the field, you know, 
on the field. She's always communicating and she's so supportive of every player, uh, no matter what, whether you make a mistake or not, she's there to lift you up and, and give you advice. And then, you know, if she's on the bench, like you'll see she's there losing her voice. She's that 12th man. And I've been on the field when she's been on the bench and it makes such a huge difference. Um, you know, when maybe your teammates are out of breath and they, they can't do the talking for you, she's there as that 12th player on the bench doing it for them. And, and then that's just football wise, like off the field, like everyone loves her. And it's not just her bubbliness, the way she's so talky and happy and she's like a ball of sun, but she's, I think it's just that um, she genuinely cares about every person, staff or player. Uh, for them, she wants to know about their family. She's just um, a person that you feel like you can go to, to talk to anything about. Um, and she's not going to judge you. She's going to be there for you. And she'll make you feel okay, regardless of what's going on. And I think having that in the team is so important. And I think uh, that's going to be a huge loss to the team now that she's gone. Oh. Honestly, my heart is racing now because I did because I'm so nervous because I don't think I'll be able to do Ivy justice. <laughs> my heart, I can feel my heart beating. So I'm like, oh, oh man, um, um, Ivy, the old grandma. Um, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think that Ivy ever consciously made the decision to be the one who takes players under her wing. It just kind of ended up that way because that's who she is like it's not like she goes oh there's a new person I'm gonna you know go out of my way and welcome them like Ivy just is so welcoming to everyone and and the young kids or the new kids or everyone is kind of gravitates towards that um and so I think that that's that's huge like to as a player who kind of struggled <clears throat> in the early years with feeling accepted um like that's huge for someone like like me and she wasn't exactly the one who put me under a wing because I wouldn't fit but <laughs> <laughs> but she um yeah it, it's like invaluable like Mary I know has has felt that all of us at some stage whether we're the same age as her coming at the same time have felt that acceptance that care that love like that Ivy just naturally brings um and even like, I think I, I've been known to be the one to take under wing as well. But for me, it's more of like a, a thought about thing. Oh, that, that person um, is alone. So maybe I should sit with them. Like, but whereas with Ivy, Ivy's just like, oh, I'm just going to walk in and like, <laughs> oh, oh, I'll go sit over here and just like welcomes people without realizing that she's doing it, you know? Um, and I know so many players have, benefit from that uh, that love and that care that she brings and so much like she's old right so she's got a lot of experience <laughs> and she was like the, for me she was like I think there were players before her but the first one to make that move to America to play in college um, and so since then she's been this like resource for people to talk to and she was also for me one of the first people to go and play overseas and just have that adventurous spirit and so she in a way like paved the way for a lot of us um and I know if I ever had any questions about any league in the world Ivy had information about it and so made you feel more comfortable about making that some sometimes can be pretty scary leap um especially for someone like Chids who yeah had never been she was still young like yeah it just so many of us have like used Ivy as a, as a sounding board to give us that courage to go and people have definitely benefited from her wealth of information but then also like having the courage to go because she kind of instills that in you and that bravery she just kind of carries always yeah and you were worried about not doing well <laughs> oh, yes. I'm glad I didn't go after that oh my god <laughs> Um, I actually this is random had a swish request my first and only one I don't know if you know what swish is it's like where they can ask you a question and then you film them a video a personal video anyway and the guy asked me that so literally yesterday I did this 
Um, and the two things I came up with were like, it's just like moments that kind of everything <laughs> stopped and stood still. And one was uh, the Rio Olympics for me, the quarterfinal penalty, 60,000 booing Brazilians, <laughs> me walking up to take the penalty and just feeling this like total calm and eerie silence when it was not silent at all. Like I could hear them booing at me. <laughs> but like I was, it was just this really weird, surreal kind of moment. And I was like exhausted because it was one o'clock in the morning or something at that point. Um, anyway, scored the penalty. So that's like one, I don't get to score very often. So that was like one moment in my career that will really stick with me because it was probably the most amount of people I've ever played in front of. And I scored a goal and obviously things didn't turn out the way we wanted to, but like that one I can really remember. And the other one was a team one and I wasn't even on the field, but that win against GB, the emotional roller coaster that the girls put me on, <laughs> losing my voice, like the like ecstatic for scoring, then you know, then when they can see, you know, it was just like this back and forth and making history and just to be a part of that moment whether I'm on the stands in on the field didn't really matter like I was part of that with the girls and that is I think going to be a really special moment that I'll be able to or game that I'll take with me for like for the rest of my life like being part of that that win and that never say die attitude and that real Matilda spirit that we have that was really really cool so they're my two team team and individual I'm going to back off of that one was and say yeah, I think for my team, kind of would have to be the GB game as well, just because it was an accumulation of so many years of hard work, of doing well at tournaments, but, you know, not getting past that first knockout stage. Um, but more than that, it was the way that the team played um, and how we used every ounce of energy and put it into that game to fight and win it um, and to not say die and to make sure that we came out of it as winners um, and to create history. I think it was amazing. Um, when a lot of people could have been doubting when we were down, you know, we came back and we won that game and it put us into um, the semi and it was incredible. I've never been so proud of a team before to show that fight and that spirit. So I, I think that would have to be my favourite team one as well. And individually, um, I think it would have to be playing in the World Cup. And it wasn't, you know, I only got like four or five minutes. But it was the fact that I'd, I'd achieved a lifelong dream. And I'd done it when, you know, in my 30s, when a lot of players would have thought, you know, my career's over, my chance is over. Up until that point, I'd been through a lot uh, injury wise and a lot with you know not being selected but coming back um, and finally achieving it was amazing but more than that it was when the whistle blew mm -hmm. and I saw my my brother and my sister yeah it was uh, incredible um, because he'd been there from the start and my sister I don't get to see a lot so yeah to have them there to see that moment um, for me to get off the fields, be able to hug them and share that moment with them meant so much to me. So I think that would have to be my happiest memory of being a player for the Matildas. I was crying right next to them too. <laughs> Girls, keep believing in yourselves. We have such a good team and there's more to come. And we all know it. And I think the public knows it and other teams know it. I think people are quite scared of what we can produce in the future so just keep believing it's coming like don't let up keep fighting hard working hard and I think it's going to come and, and keep taking care of each other because when you know someone cares about you off the field I think you're able to work that much harder on the field for them so just keep doing us and um, hopefully there's more success in the future. Yeah, I don't think I could have said that any better. <laughs> well, um, yes, it's no secret. Can I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying for? <laughs> lots and lots of babies. <laughs> yes, try. Well, actually, supporting my husband after he's just supported me for the last few years of following my dream and 
making that a reality and putting our life on hold for that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm supporting now his, his journey for excellence and um, <laughs> wherever that takes us. I'm hoping Southern California, so keep that in your um, But, yeah, we, honestly, I am enjoying retirement life. Who knows? I might end up in the surfing world, surf coaching or soccer coaching or I'm so happy just to be a mum. Um, that's what I'm really hoping for. Yeah, I just got to Italy a couple of weeks ago, so I'm going to be playing here for a season and then I'm not entirely sure what I will do. Um, there's a couple of things in mind, but it will depend how I feel footballing-wise, whether I want to play another season or not. So right now I'm just focusing on the here and now, enjoying my time in Italy um, and trying to help my team, Pomigliano, uh, play as well as possible. Um, and then, you know, on the side, uh, travel when I can, eat pizza when I can in moderation, of course. Um, and yeah, and see where the year takes me, really. <laughs> <laughs>